It's no secret, dating is becoming more and more competitive, more and more unequal. Fact. The percentage of men without intimacy has tripled in the last decades. Fact. The percentage of people believing polygamy is okay has more than doubled in the last decade. Fact. 39% of men themselves admit dating is harder today than it was 10 years ago with only 23% saying it's easier. And the biggest reason this 39% cited is, no surprises here, technology. This was followed by dating having more physical and emotional risk, dating becoming more impersonal, and lastly, guys saying it's harder to meet people. These statistics all point towards dating becoming more unequal. Gone are the days where every man has a chance. And in with the days where the top 20% of men prevail. Now, after this short introduction, the focal question of this video is just one word. How? How is dating now like this where you have to be in the top 20% just to have options? Well, to avoid wasting your time, here are the majority of the answers. Most of these answers are actually quite simple and self-explanatory. If you are new to the channel, feel free to read through these in your own time. But for the rest of you, I don't think we really need to discuss these. After all, I've covered these points many times in previous videos, so it'd essentially be a waste of breath repeating myself. So, instead... For this video, I'm going to give a completely new explanation. I promise you've never heard of this before and I promise you'll find it interesting. It will take a couple minutes to grasp though, so listen closely as I explain this. The way I see it is there are two types of skills. One, skills that snowball. Two, skills with diminishing returns. Now, the difference between these two skills is snowballing skills means the better you get at it, the easier it becomes to improve even further. It's similar to a snowball that gets bigger and bigger as it accrues more mass. Meanwhile, for diminishing returns skills, the better you get, the harder it becomes to find new progress. In other words, skills that snowball are the concept of abundance breeds abundance. Those that have something to begin with will get more of that thing in future, while those without it at the start will only go further and further backwards as time goes on. Then, for skills with diminishing returns, people that are currently behind will have a chance to catch up to those who are already ahead as their rate of improvement will be faster. Now, in my opinion, when it comes to dating, this in many respects is a skill that snowballs. So the chads who were better off to begin with will only see more success in future, compared with the sub-fives and low-tier normies who will likely either stay where they are, improve a little but not enough to catch up to the chads, or even worse, only go further backwards. I will explain the reasons for why I believe this is, but first, the important question to ask is, what is the distinguishing factor that makes a skill either snowball or have diminishing returns? Surprisingly, the answer is simple. Does getting better at the skill lead to more practice, in which case you become even better, making it a snowball skill? or less practice, in which case you'll see less improvement, making it diminishing returns. Now, this might seem a little difficult to categorise skills to which fits each explanation, but here's two great examples from my own life that reflects each of them, which will make it easy to work out for any other skill. So, a few years ago, I used to play this sport rugby for a team which, for you Americans watching, is similar to American football, but without the pads and you can only pass backwards. Now, in rugby, at any one time, your team will be doing one of two things, either attacking or defending. 
Now, I personally wasn't very good at defending compared to the others on my team. But thankfully, defending is a diminishing return skill, which allowed me to catch up to the superior players given enough time. Why is this? Well, in rugby, if an attacker with the ball is running at your team, he basically gets to choose which person he runs at. And if we colour code these defenders by how good they are at defending, if he gets to choose to either run at me or the excellent defenders next to me, then of course he'll take his chance against me, the weaker defender. What does this mean? Well, over time, after hundreds of repetitions, I'm going to be faced with lots more attackers compared to my teammates, which in other words will allow me to experience more practice. Therefore, I'll close the gap between my defending abilities and my teammates. Until, eventually, we are all at the same level so we've reached equilibrium. That's an example of inferiority leading to more practice and therefore makes it a diminishing return skill. In contrast, when we now look at the attacking side of rugby, this by all means is a skill that snowballs. And luckily... This was the stronger point of my game as I was very fast and agile and the fact this skill snowballs allowed me to capitalise even further and be one of the best attackers on the team. So, why does this skill snowball? Well, when your team is in attack, the scrum half who starts with the ball each play, he's going to have several options of who to pass the ball to. Now, when he's making his decision... He knows that some of the receivers are better than the others. Therefore, more often than not, he's going to prioritise passing to the better players. Which, in turn, allows these already better players to get even more practice. Therefore making them even better. And as for the weaker attackers, they'll never get as much practice and therefore have a very slim chance of ever catching up. Bottom line... Attacking in rugby is a skill that snowballs. So, you should now have a crystal clear understanding of the two types of skill at this point. Now tying this in to dating, which as stated earlier, I believe is definitely a skill that snowballs. And therefore means the men who are already at the top are only going to get further apart from the men at the bottom. In other words, dating will become more and more unequal. Here are my points for why I believe it snowballs. 1. Pre-selection We've all seen this before. At school, all the girls fighting over the same guy. This guy, who is the topic of all the gossip, has immense power in his position. And if and when any new girls come into the picture, chances are her eyes will go straight to the man all the other girls are already chasing. After all, he is pre-selected, meaning other girls have previously selected him as suitable. And if other girls find him attractive and are interested in him, it means he must be desirable and high value. He is a safe bet compared to the other loner men available who have no girls interested in them. Now, part of the reason why pre-selection is valuable is to do with social proof, which is my second point of why I believe dating is a skill that snowballs. Social proof is the concept that simply by having other people validate your social position, this automatically elevates your social position further in the eyes of others. If you are a popular guy and have lots of friends, other people who don't even know you yet will look at you like you're the main person of the group. They will have this subconscious feeling of trust once they establish themselves in your presence. Now, if you're not this guy, if you're less relevant or even worse, a complete outsider... Building social proof is extremely difficult because bystanders will be looking at you asking questions like Why is he alone? Where are his friends? Why does he look like he's creeping on everyone else? Now, both of these two factors, 
Social proof and pre-selection are important. But this is overlooking the starting point which often determines whether you're likely to be this guy. And that is of course your looks. Let me put it this way. If you're a below average looks guy, good luck trying to build a social circle. If you're a shorter guy, good luck getting people to respect you and treat you as if you're on their level. Now obviously, getting these things isn't impossible if you have these limitations. But it is harder. You are always going to be starting further behind than the better looking, taller guys who were given a head start in building these two things. And the point is, relating this to the snowball, since there are the guys out there that have this initial edge over you, they can now leverage this to become even more popular, have more social proof, receive more pre-selection. And this leads into my next point which is more directly tied to dating, which is escalation experience. For an unattractive guy, even if he gets lucky and finds himself where he can escalate with a girl, he's not necessarily had much experience previously which he can use to increase the chances he'll be successful. It's likely he'll be oblivious to picking up on choosing signals, adjusting his body language, calibrating his tone to match the temperature of the conversation. Meanwhile, for a Chad guy who's received ample feedback in his life, most of which will have been positive, he's got a lot of experience to go back off and increase his chances of success with a girl. And, even if some of his feedback had been negative in the past, he has the final benefit of using trial and error to his advantage. For an attractive guy, he can experiment as much as he likes with different social techniques, different phrases and openers. Because he knows even when this fails, he'll still have more opportunities in the future. For instance, just this simple example, for a chad on a dating app, if he's got 500 matches, he can send many variations of texts and then find out which ones have the highest response rates and chances of landing dates. Then he can optimise his sequence for the future to increase his rate of success even more. Meanwhile, for a below average looks guy, who might only have 5 matches, it'd be a bit risky sending an audacious message like this to any of them. So instead, it's likely he'll play safe and send hey to all 5 girls which is nowhere near going to be as effective as the optimised sequence that Chad was able to find via trial and error. Anyway, those are my 5 points of how the top 10% of men will only set themselves further apart as time goes on. If you've enjoyed, make sure you press the like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below as it all helps the YouTube algorithm.